everybody and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to work on another piece that will include some mixed media stuff. And so far what I have done is I've just drawn a pattern that I want to try to create. Um, this I find helps me tremendously when it comes to designing a piece like this. I want to walk away from the word geode because although there are crystals and things like that involved, it's not technically a geode, right? A geode is a geode. This is a piece of art that has crystals in it. So I'm trying to come up with a better term for it. And I, I just, I say geode and that doesn't really sound right. So I'm just going to start calling it a mixed media piece because in the end, that's what it is. So I've drawn some lines to kind of plan where things are going to go. But what I most importantly need to do first is I need to make a template for these two end areas. And this is why I'm going to be using some heat transfer vinyl. It's not Cricut, but it's similar. It's a nice white sparkly paper. And I want to use it only in these two areas. So what I'm planning on doing is using a piece of tracing paper to trace these lines. And I will show you how I do this. And then what I could do is cut it out and make a template for myself. And of course, well, it will go this way. I can cut it out, make a template for myself, and then use it on that um, heat transfer paper so that I could cut out the right size. So we have that on there. Let's get it right to area I need it to start just trying to get it perfect on there and now what I'm going to do is trace this line as closely as I can possibly get it. My hands are shaky, so sometimes this is hard to do. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. Let's see if we could put a fold in this paper. So now what I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to cut this. Like so. And then I'm going to cut it out. So now what I can do so I could take this template that I made put it on the heat transfer paper or vinyl and I can cut out that shape this paper. Now there may be a much easier way than that, but this is the way I'm doing it. If I've learned anything about myself, it's that I don't do things the easy way. But as soon as I'm done struggling, 
I instantly think, oh, I could have did it that way. <laughs> That's just me. Let me get this wrapper off here. This thing's locked up tighter than the Hope Diamond. Now, this does not have a sticky back, so what I can do is move this uh, canvas out of the way. Which, by the way, that is a 12 by 16 gesso block that... Um, I got it Joann's. So now you see I can put this just like this. Take my pencil. Trace. Oh boy. Just tracing it. Jeez Louise mac and cheese. Okay. Again with the scissors. Oh. Guess what I just did? <laughs> I needed to put it backwards, I think. Yeah. Oh, what a ding dong. <sighs> Tell ya. If my brain wasn't attached, I'd be dangerous. Then that just made no sense. <laughs> if my brain head wasn't attached, I would lose it. Oh. I'm combining insults from my grandfather when I was young. <laughs> he used to say, if you had a brain, you would be dangerous. <laughs> and I'd say, old school Italian grandparents. Lots of flying hands and yelling. What they call tough love. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, <clears throat> my grandparents, they spoiled the crap out of me. I loved them when they were alive. Miss them every day. All right. Now, let's try it. So I'll just cut it out. gonna go this way to make my life a little bit easier 
I'm not worried about it being a little jagged on the edges because I will have a, something, some type of barrier there, whether it be gold leaf or whatnot. I am worried about it being big enough. Stuff is not the easiest thing to cut, I'll tell you. Alright. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you suffer through the second piece. Just wanted to make sure. I don't know if that's, that's not the right one. It was this one over here. So now what I could do is come back with it and uh, glue it down. Pretty dang close, I'll tell you. So yeah, I'm going to glue it down because it needs to be glued. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And then I'll be back. All right, so my paper has dried beautifully. No air bubbles. It's not lifting anywhere. It's just absolutely perfect. And now it's time to start designing. Now, <clears throat> as far as designing goes, I do not have a color scheme. I don't have anything planned out except for the pre-planning I did here with drawing where I want my colors to go, the lines, how I want them to flow. I don't know the color pattern, like do I want green, blue, purple, green, blue, purple. I don't have any of that in my head. I'm going to start off with two colors that I know I want to use, and then I'm just going to start picking and choosing from that point. I don't want to overwhelm myself with all of these decisions. I want this to be fun, relaxing, and carefree. Now, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to clutch your pearls because let me tell you something. I did not think the creator of the resin art colors, Miss Leslie Onstat, could come up with anything more beautiful than those colors. To me, those are the most beautiful colors I have ever seen. So, for example, here is one of the colors, the resin art colors, and that's Ginger Bloom. You can see it's a very nice, uh, pigmented, finely ground powder. Well... Let me tell you something. I almost went into cardiac arrest when I saw her new line. Now, these colors are made with larger mica flakes, but still behave the same way as the resin art colors. They melt right into the resin. There's no residue left behind. They are... I've used other brands that have been like a diamond galaxy line they're called, where they have a lot of glitter and sparkle. And a lot of the other ones that I've used have left a sandy, glittery, like it breaks apart on the canvas and you can, it almost looks like sand in your artwork. And I don't like that. These do not do that. I want to show you the size of this powder compared to the resin art colors. Look at the size of that. And what it does is it allows the color to sparkle and shine so brilliantly that I, I'm just, this is, this is my passion, okay, working with beautiful colors. And I cannot find anything for me that is better than resin art colors and resin art products. Um, made by Color Art, all their products, even the primary elements. My God. Leslie Onstat is her name. She has a YouTube channel. She has a video, a recent video, showing all of these new uh, Galaxy 
colors mixed up and what they look like. And oh, her setting is white and bright. You can see them perfectly. Just gorgeous. My hat's off to Miss Leslie Onstaff. So, of course, I have all the colors. And, well, I don't have all the colors. I only bought eight of them. There are 14. I'm going to pick and choose some for this piece that we're working on so you can see them. So far, I've picked out teal magnolia and seafoam. Okay? And some of these you're going to see, especially in, you watch her video because she shows them up close where I'm going to have them on a canvas. I can't really show you the color shifting, but go watch that video. I'm going to link that video below. And before I go any further, I want to do my shout out. I'm going to shout out to Mr. Billy from Archangel Studio, Art Studio. He has a YouTube channel. Go check him out. I believe he's making uh, wood boards now, rounds, and he has some beautiful artwork he does. Please, please, please go check him out. He's a joy to watch, down to earth guy, and just awesome. And I will also link his channel below. So I've mixed up my stone coat and I've just separated it into smaller um, cups so I don't have to worry about things setting up quickly because if you mix up your resin and you leave it in a big batch in one cup, it's going to start curing. So you have to get it into smaller little batches. So the first thing I want to do is, of course, this is going to be a multi-layer project because I'm going to have to add glitter and stuff. But the first thing I want to do is just start putting some color into these little swirly do areas curves, whatever they're called. <laughs> and the first one I said I was going to use was the teal magnolia. So I'm going to just put a little bit in a cup. Now for this pigment, just like the resin art, it is an eighth of a teaspoon per ounce of resin. So I have some little taster spoons that she sent me out with my colors. These are the ones she uses in her videos, which are an eighth of a teaspoon. Now these cups that I have are one ounce. So I'm going to use a half of one of these because I have about a half an ounce. And I'm going to show you just how nice and easy these mix in. Just like that, all gone. Now let me show you this beautiful color. Now with these, if you want it to be less concentrated, you want it to be a little transparent, just add a little couple of flakes at a time until you get what you want. Is that not gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to start, now you can see I went off, I covered one of my lines here, so I'm just going to make this one a little bit wider. And I don't want to really cover over the paper, so stay a little bit away from it and allow the resin to spread out towards it. And look at what I just did. I'll tell you. Don't hold your cups over your artwork. So I'm just going to fill in that whole area. And um, move on. So I'm going to... 
do this fast forwarded for you guys so I'm not here for two hours. All right, up next, I'm going to be using the Seafoam Green, which is gorgeous. It's a little bit lighter than that Teal Magnolia. And with this, I'm going to go right down the center, right in here. He said you want to when you want to do fine areas like this just be very patient take your time relax it's supposed to be fun a few little drips in there <clears throat> For something like this, a stick, popsicle stick, or a little spoon like I was using can be your best friend. That and having patience, which <laughs> is very hard for me. I just want to like throw it on there and tilt the board around, but you won't get nice, clean, crisp lines like this if you do that. So, patience is a virtue, as they say. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do time lapse for the rest of this coloring because this is all I'm going to be doing for these areas at first. And then what I need to do after I get these down is I have to start adding in glitter some matte colors because when you have shimmery colors and you have shimmery paper on your canvas you need somewhere for your eye to rest so you have to have some flat or matte colors i call them flat because i don't know that's just what i call them but technically they're matte just something so that your whole piece isn't burning out your retinas All right, so I'll finish filling this in and the rest of it. You'll see the colors that I choose. And for each color that I choose, <clears throat> I will show them to you up under the camera.
I really need to get a camera. Anyway, I was trying to show you the name. My my camera on my phone won't focus when it's in uh, hyperlapse, time lapse. So I wanted to show you this next color, but of course I'm using junk to build this channel. <laughs> I do what I can, guys. I'm sorry. It's very expensive to run a channel and all that jazz. So, for now, I have to suffer with my camera phone, phone camera, until I'm YouTube famous. So, maybe by the year 2058. I'll be long dead. My ghost will be making videos on a beautiful camera for you. <laughs> right, so this now is Andromeda. It looks a lot like the Purple Galaxy, but it's a light, a little bit shader. Oh my lord, have mercy. A light, a shade lighter. And technically, I believe it's a blue. So I don't know if you'll be able to see with the cup. See that? This is a blue. So I'm just moving along here. Filling in these sections. A little bit at a time. Thinking I will... Pour some of that right there. With those little plastic cups, medicine cups, they don't bend the ones that I have. So the lines come out squiggly. But if I wanted to get a nice straight line and not use the stick, um, paper would work beautifully. These colors, boy, wow. It's funny how we grow old or older and the things that once excited us no longer do and things like this now do. Let me tell you something. There's nothing like a beautiful, sparkly patch of resin. So I believe these are the only colors I'm going to use as much as I want to use the pink. I don't want to make it too carnival-y. Carnival Not that that's a word. But yeah, so I'm going to finish filling in these sections with the uh, those three colors. Uh, one, two, three, four colors. And then I'll be back for the next step. All right, so a lot of people ask me the best time to do glitter. Now, the best time to do glitter is when your resin is starting to warm up in the cup and it is starting to get to that stage where you're like, oh crap, I better move it or I'm going to end up with a brick in the cup. So this is just starting to warm up. I can feel a little tiny bit of heat on, on the uh, outside of the cup it was in. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of clear and a whole bunch of some Rebel Glitter by Just For You Online UK. Shiniest, brightest diamonds in my sky. I'll tell you that. This glitter is phenomenal. 
Beautiful. I have, by the way, a link for glitter the uh, and a coupon code. I have a coupon code for the resin art colors, which also works for primary elements, all of that. I have all the links that you need below. Well, most of them. I don't have the link to the money tree, but I do have... Oh... Uh-oh. I just got distracted. Maybe. Hmm. Is this piece special enough? I have a very beautiful container of Opal Flakes by Just For You Online. And I've been saving them for a special occasion. And I'm just wondering if this may be it. Let's see. Now these things are absolutely gorgeous. Just be careful not to breathe or talk <laughs> or do anything until you have them mixed into the glitter because they're almost like gold leaf, the, the light flakes of it. And they will fly through the air. I'm going to very carefully show this to you and I'm not going to talk. Focus. All right, I'm safe. <laughs> Mix them into your resin. And then, what I wanna do is use a bigger stick and try to outline this area here. I'm hoping that it'll work to cover up that screw if I had there. What happened was my board wasn't level. So the purple went underneath the sea foam. And because it's a darker color, you can see it. So I know nothing's coming off my stick. I'm just trying to trace it back to a good spot to let go of it. I may leave that right there. I like that. Kind of looks like it goes, so. So. You see now how long I was able to continue this one line of glitter because I used a big stick. If you use just a normal popsicle stick, it's going to keep breaking off and look crappy. So try to use a bigger stick whenever you do your glitter lines like this. Yeah, I like that. I'm glad I used it. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing over here.
I like to start off of the board a little bit. Of course, as soon as I say that to you, it starts breaking. <laughs> If it does break, just continue on. Don't try stopping and going over it. Just continue on, just as I am. Let it skip areas. You know what? I should have went this way here. I like this. I like this little bit going over the purple. So it turns it into a different shade. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I really, really like these flakes they're just gorgeous All right, so I'm going to put down the rest of my glitter and then the two areas on the end. What I'm going to be doing is just adding clear over those for now, just so that there's a complete layer of resin so that it's level. Nope, Tammy, stop it. So that it's all level, so that when I work on it the next time, <clears throat> I may actually add some rocks once it starts getting really sticky, we'll see. You may see me come in here and add the clear and then put the rocks on it. Just trying to get a little tiny bit of these. Where they belong. And then I'm going to do it right over here. Okay.
I'm going to add some of these Bling It translucent silver small medium size mica flakes into some clear resin and I'm going to use that to go on these two outer edges. Again, you just have to wait for things to thicken up. This is really nice and thick. Now it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. So just pour some in the clear resin, make it nice and thick. And maybe I can even add a little diamond dust in here. To give it that extra pop. Now that this is really, really thick really thick so let me add just a little bit of diamond dust that is diamond dust I have that in my Amazon shop little glass shard glitter I'm hoping this isn't too thick now. Just get the rest of this in there. There's a, a fine line between really thick and too thick. So you have to get it right when it starts warming up. Now, I was playing around with the opal flakes, so that added a lot of time to this resin that was sitting in the cup. Hopefully, it'll work. I'm going to see first if I can pour it from the cup. Just pinching the top really tight. I'm just going to test it over here. Yeah, that's going to come flying out on me. It's like really, really thick. Hold up, wait a minute.
All right, so I'm going to do this to the other side. Maybe add it in a few more places and then go on to the next step. Maybe I won't fill these ends in with clear and I'm just going to wait till I go on to the next level. All right, so right about now, you're looking in the screen saying, did I miss half of the video? What happened? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I decided to cut out a large portion of this video because I am not happy with what I have and I am going to go right over this. So I didn't want to bore you with 20 minutes of unnecessary crap. So... I I don't know. I'm not feeling the ends. I ended up doing little puddle pours and then they spread too much. They covered all my pretty paper. So now I'm just annoyed and I need to try to save this. Uh, if this was a canvas, I probably would have just thrown it in the garbage. But it's not. It's a gesso block and I don't like to waste those. I don't like to waste canvases either, but at some point... I've just had enough with a, a painting and it goes. So what I've done is I've made a mess and I have to clean it and I have to get back to my nice carefully planned lines. So I took a marker and I don't know if you can see it even maybe a little bit here you can and I just drew in some more curves and now I'm going to fill them in and try to save this piece. You can see I have some rocks here that are the white flow through and oh, it's just a mess. So I'm going to fix this up now and see if I can't get back into my Zen zone and hopefully save this piece. One option that you have when something like this happens, which I will do a lot of the times, I'm not going to today though, um, is you can take some really thick, thick, heavy bodied acrylic paint. Let me see if I have some here that I can show you. And you can paint over the resin. That's a, a heavy body. I usually do white or black. Um, you could paint over the resin because sometimes seeing this, this mess here will distract me and I can't see a clear way to fixing it. So that's one way that you can kind of take this out of the way. Um, it helps me when it comes to deciding what colors to use. But I think what I'm going to do is add in some white with a, a very minimal, well, I shouldn't say that because I may go heavy in some areas. Well, let's just see what happens, okay? Okay, so I have some colors mixed up. And um, it's the same colors that I used before. I'm not sure if you guys saw the Just For You Online UK Opal Glitter Flakes. If I had shown them or cut them out, but they are in the board here. And my God, these things are just magical. absolutely magical so I mixed up some more of the same colors I'll show you them quick again seafoam green these are resin art the teal magnolia and then Andromeda And I have some white by Lorez mixed up. And then I'm thinking I'm going to mix up some sterling silver by Lorez. Just because I need to do a silver or a gold in here. Well, I don't need to, but I want to. So I'm thinking of the sterling silver. 
thinking it might go nicely with these colors. So I'll just mix a little bit of that up and we'll get started. Oh, hard as a rock. People, I think I'm all done with the paste. To be honest with you, I don't really need them with these resin art colors because the reason why people buy paste, in my opinion, but this is only my opinion, now don't slaughter me, is because they're easier to mix in than the mica powders and because you like that shimmery look. But the problem is, for me, I don't know about everybody else, is I don't use them fast enough. They go hard. They, they don't have an a infinity life, uh, shelf life. So, you know, I use it a couple times and that's like, you know, 15 bucks down the toilet now. Now, I know they say that you can heat these up, but uh, I don't want to have to stop now to go heat this up because I didn't look at my paste first. So, I'm fine with the resin art colors. They look metallic. Uh, these other ones here, the Galaxy Diamond line or Diamond Galaxy line, they have the shimmer. The other ones have the metallic look, and I, I'm just very happy with them. For me, there is no need for any more pastes. So, I guess I'm going to go with gold. Because <laughs> I do not have another silver other than that. So, I guess I will be doing... You know what? I'll wait for the, the gold part. Let me start this. So, I'm going to do this in time lapse because all you're going to see me doing is filling in these little areas to kind of even them out. Now, one thing, because I worked on this at different times... This layer here is higher than this layer, but now I have this section that I want to make one color, but it's two separate layers. So what I'm going to do is fill a little bit of this in with the color that I'm going to be using here and just put a light coating up here. Okay, if that makes sense, you'll see what I'm doing when I start the film. So here we go. All right, so I got it somewhat back to normal-ish. And um, I know you can see a couple of the spots. You can see the underneath of what was there, but that's fine. I'll take care of that when the time comes. Right now, I want to add in some of my opal flakes. Now, people want to know when the right time to add the glitter is, and that is... Um, Actually, I might have talked about that already in the first part, but just in case I didn't, it's at the end when the resin is just starting to warm up uh, and it's getting really thick. Now, you don't want it really hot. You want it right when you touch the cup and you just start feeling warmth. Then it tends not to spread as much. It'll keep a nice straight line formation. So... Going to add in some of the opal flakes here. And 
Now for this, I'm not doing a straight line. I'm kind of doing a little design, we'll say. So a little bit there. Just so it's poking out in some places, if that makes sense. I'll use some right here to try to help cover up some of that underneath. And then I do want to do a line all the way down here, but I need a bigger stick. So hopefully it will not break off and keep one solid line. If the red, if the glitter and resin break off while you're trying to make your, your line, say you're going like this and it breaks contact, and then starts again. Do not like go back and forth like this because it makes it a little messy looking. Just keep going and then go back and touch it up. I'll see if I could demonstrate here. Can't make any promises. Always start off the board. So right there it broke, again. So you see how I'm not stopping? It's gonna continue on. And now I'll go back and try to fill it in the best that I can, which usually works. Okay, so I'm going to add the rest of my glitter, and then I'll come back to do the stones. I'm coming around the corner on this piece, guys. We're almost there. So I have a gold pen here. I'm going to throw in a few lines, I think. And then I have my stones. I'm, I'm uh, liking this a lot more now. I just couldn't deal with the craziness of the other one. I don't know. Beginning to think that simple is best. So this is just a cheap craft smart pen. And then what I do is I always go back over it just to brighten it. Now, usually I like using my Posca pens for this, but I wanted a really fine line and the tip that I have in those are not as fine as this one. Now, you don't have to add lines if you don't want to. Obviously. I kind of just choose a couple of areas that are wide open that I feel it would look okay. And then this piece that's right over here. And 
so as far as this piece goes, this is all designed. I, I'm not doing any more design work. It's all glitter and stones from this point forward. So what I'm going to be using for glitter and stones will be, I have some just for you glitter. If I can find it, for some reason, I ordered a bag of blue rebel glitter and I'm not seeing it here. Seeing the gold. So I'm going to look for that, but you'll see me using that. I'll show it on the camera. I'm going to use some of these vase fillers, reflective vase fillers, uh, Ashland brand. I think this is home, um, Hobby Lobby. And then from Arteza, for the first time in my videos, I'm going to be using one of their glitters. And this one is really, really pretty. It's more of the big, like, confetti type glitter. And I just thought that this color would offset it nice. I don't know if the camera will focus with this. Let's see here. It's kind of, like I said, the confetti type. Your, your, uh, mylar glitter. So I have that to mix in with the beautiful just for you. Not that it needs it, but I just wanted that this specific color. So I'm going to do that. Maybe you'll see me add a couple of things in here or there. You know, it, it just has to come to you. Oh, here's my blue glitter. Okay, so I'm going to put it on time lapse. Here we go. Alright, so I'm using the Just For You res uh, glitters and a little bit of those Arteza glitters. And I'm just kind of sprinkling them on here and there. It's a little bit too much here. And I'm just going to keep working on the areas, adding stones and all that jazz until I get something that I like. I'm going very carefully up along here with some of the smaller glitter from Just For You. Just a couple of little flakes go a long way, especially with a good quality glitter like this. So just take your time, go slow. One thing I do I will take a pinch of glitter and then I'll like shake my hands like this to get any loose ones from flying into the rest of my painting.
And if there are any loose ones that float off where they don't belong, I'll just use a toothpick and pull them out. So the resin is really thick right now. It's been sitting probably about two hours. So just grab yourself a toothpick and push these where they belong or just take them off of there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, my friends. And I'm going to add a little more diamond dust because who doesn't need more diamond dust in their life, right? And I just keep going until I like what it looks like and then I'm done. Now, after this is cured, I will come back and tip it upside down to get all the loose glitter off. I'll remove the tape from the sides because those sides are all covered up with tape. They're wood sides. And then when I sell it, I will do the top coat and it'll be done. I don't do the top coat until I sell it because I don't want to waste the resin if it's just going to sit around and not sell. But that's a double-edged sword because it's also nice to have a piece totally completed when somebody buys it and not make them wait seven days for it to ship out. Now, if I was only producing a painting here or there, you know, maybe one a week, then I would just top coat it and be done with it. Or if I knew I had a festival coming up, that I had to have things done for right then and there, then I would do it right away. But... For the channel and producing so many pieces it gets expensive and I just don't want to waste the resin unless I have to or unless it's needed now I'm just gonna move these little pieces out of the way that don't belong and I'm gonna take you guys in for a close-up So again, shout out to Billy and his lovely wife, Gina, who is also now making videos. Go check out their channel. It's Archangel Art Studio. And as I said, they also make uh, wood rounds to create art on. And just really overall nice people. Good Southern folk. Also, don't forget to check the links below. I have coupon codes for a lot of the... Uh, Products. I have the products, some of the products that I use that are on Amazon in my Amazon influencer store. Also, color art products, uh, primary elements, all that jazz are on Amazon also. So I'm going to be adding those into my store in case you wanted to have a look at them there 
these beautiful, luscious, heart-stopping products. And what else? I think that might be it. Yes, yeah, so check out everything below. The product links, the coupon codes, uh, links to get to me. Leave a comment, subscribe, click the bell, share. I love you all. I'm so happy to be back and be creating again. And until next time, my friends, happy pouring.